Hey guys, Alex here. Out in the garage. Well, we are in the garage right now, but uh, not working in here today. So right here is the Forerunner, doing a bunch of body work on it. Um, real slow, because I don't know how to do body work. But anyway, that's not, that's not what this video is about. So today we're working on the Ranger. Let's talk about what we're doing. So this is my Ford Ranger 93. Uh, five speed, four cylinder, blah blah blah. Not a whole lot of options on it. One thing it doesn't have is cruise control. Uh, which is something I would like. So the factory cruise control buttons are on the steering wheel. Um, you can get all the factory parts out of a junkyard truck uh, and hope they all work um, and put it in. It's more difficult than you might guess. So I'm going to be installing this kit today. This is the AudioVox CCS TAC 100. It's a universal cruise control kit. comes with almost everything. gets good reviews. Seriously does come with pretty much everything. I mean it comes with different mounting brackets, different ways that you can either tap into the speed sensor or mount your own speed sensor. Comes with the servo, comes with all sorts of different adapters to mount to the different vacuum lines on the car that you're using. All sorts of random brackets that you can use, different ways to hook up to the throttle cable. The instructions are very thorough. It even comes with uh, some re a reference manual for like different wire colors for different vehicles so that you can tap into the right place. So different years, all under by Manufacturer, the year, the model, comes with all sorts of information on how to wire into the different vehicles. So the kit made by AudioVox, my dad actually used the same kit in a Geo Metro uh, that he had a while back, um, and he liked it. Uh, the AudioVox kit, which is what we have here, is discontinued now. You might be able to find a new unused one like my dad did uh, and gave to me, but uh, if not, there is a company that makes a... Um, I guess it's a knockoff, but it's the same exact thing, and it works exactly the same. You can just search CCS TAC 100 on eBay, and you should be able to find it. So obviously your best uh, friend in one of these installations is probably the user manual, the install manual. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be following. I'm just kind of walking you through what I do, and hopefully it's like a good supplement to it, you know? That's kind of what this is all about, so let's, let's go through it. The first step is to select a location to mount the uh, servo to. And uh, in my opinion, it's probably one of the most difficult things. You've got to find a good spot for it where there's room and where the vacuum thing's in a good location and where the cable can reach and where the wires can reach. So it's kind of kind of tough. So it's like the hardest part. So let's just go look at the engine bay and see if we can figure out a spot to stick this thing. Okay, I'm going to pull this cover off here. This cover, uh, for whatever reason, it covers up the uh, throttle cable connection to the throttle body. And it's got this weird funky linkage in here on this engine. have got to figure out a way to connect up to this, probably using this auxiliary slot here, and have it connect up to uh, to there, and it comes with all, the kit comes with all sorts of extensions, just got to pick the right one to work with this. So the kit comes with all these little, um, these are like the extension pieces here, and uh, I use these little ball link chains to extend to pretty much any length. Um, and connect in multiple ways to all sorts of different throttle linkages. And the instructions actually give you all sorts of ideas on how to do it as well. All sorts of different configurations are outlined here. Ways to, uh, you know, different ways to kind of help you out. Wow, this kit's pretty amazing. Look at this. Figure number seven. Ford linkage adapter. It's got that funky little white plastic piece. See that? That's that. And let's see how that's going to fit on here. This is pretty amazing. Damn, that was cool. These things are pretty tough. Alright, so these little uh, connector things are really tight. So if you have to use them, I actually uh, was afraid I was going to rip the, uh, the since the cable is wound wire, uh, I didn't want to get it to fray or rip. So I actually widen this gap here with a flat screwdriver uh, to make it easier to slip over. And I'm going to slip it over and then if I need, if it still feels like, it, if it feels like it might be loose then I can, uh, Squeeze it with a pair of pliers and close that gap up so it doesn't come apart. Alrighty, so now we'll just slip this right over here. And then slip the uh, chain through there. And there's a small hole here for a cotter pin to go into. So we'll install our cotter pin here. There we go. Cotter pin's installed. Let me just bend it over. And just for good measure, I'll pinch this thing close. There we go. And now this is able to pull the throttle. Very good, very neat. I'm going to just adjust the uh, play there, a couple nuts, 
Man. Look at that. Ready to go. I could trim off this extra cable. Actually, I think I'm just going to zip tie it kind of like this. Um, at least until I know everything's good. Uh, that way, you know, if something comes up and I mess something up, then I can redo it. But uh, eventually I'll just end up snipping it right here just to kind of get rid of the extra wire. So I'm already pretty impressed with the kit just because of that. That's that's pretty neat. That's pretty awesome. Um, but we need to figure out where to mount the servo. Found a location I like. Uh, we're going to mount it right about there. And uh, route the cable kind of like that. This provides a pretty good routing. Vacuum hose is easy to get to. The plug is easy to get to. Um, so, so I think that'll work. I already uh, marked and uh, Hammer, or punch the hole, center punch the holes, and I'm just going to drill them out. Drill a couple holes, got a couple bolts to go into there, and uh, it's just in there loose. I just wanted to kind of get a feel for the position. The next thing I'm going to do is hook up the vacuum. So on the intake manifold, you got to find a good uh, source of vacuum. Um, you, it comes with all sorts of T's, so if you got a hose somewhere, you can just cut it and uh, put the T in it. Uh, mine, my truck already has some uh, caps on this big vacuum tree thing, Majig here. So I'm just going to pull one of those caps off and stick my vacuum hose on there. If you don't have uh, an empty uh, vacuum nipple anywhere, you can use one of these T's. There we go. So that nipple is uh, a little bit larger than the vacuum hose that the kit comes with. So that's where the reducer comes in handy. It's got a big side and a small side and this real short piece of tube. And then slip it onto that vacuum tree thing. So now, my smaller vacuum line, which comes with the kit, Onto here. <sighs> now we're ready to rock and roll. Now we got a whole bunch of vacuum hose here. Just want to route this in a nice, safe manner, away from anything hot and you know bad for rubber things. So it feels like it's pretty good right there. Now I'll just hook the vacuum hose up to the nipple on the uh, servo here. Now that we have the uh, vacuum and the throttle cable hooked up we can start working on the electrical part of this. So there's the main connector and there's the uh, dip switches. So the manual goes through how to set those. We'll get to that in a little bit. In order to get to wiring this thing up I'm just gonna plug the plug plug the plug in and uh, start routing wires to kind of close to where they need to be that way I can start getting them to length and start connecting them. Main connector. There it goes. Now that's plugged in. We can fan the wires out in order to get this uh, cover back on now. Alrighty, so we got the control box mounted here. Uh, bolts just finger tight and we got the wires coming out of her. So there's two wires that we need to find under the hood. One is the vehicle speed sensor wire. That I traced all the way back from the, uh, the transmission forward on these Rangers. It's a gray wire with a black stripe. Uh, I traced it all the way from transmission where it bolts through the, goes through the firewall. But uh, on the other side of the firewall, there's nothing plugged into it, so I just snipped the wire, made it real easy. Um, in your case, you probably won't be able to do that. You'd have to splice into it, but for me, it worked out. Now I need to find the tack wire. So the, this can um, use the tachometer signal to sense when you press in the clutch. So when it senses the RPMs rising really quickly, it uh, shuts off. Gray and black wire pair. Uh, the vehicle has this vehicle speed sensor wire, then remove the spade terminal and connect the gray wire uh, from the... This is from the uh, cruise control kit to the vehicle speed sensor wire using the scotch lock connector provided. Uh, the black wire is not used, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here's the gray slash black wire pair. Um, so we're just going to connect the gray wire here to our vehicle speed sensor wire. Okay, so these three wires, which is the uh, brown, yellow, and green, these go to the switch panel which is uh, inside the car mounted on the dash wherever you put it so I'm gonna run these through the firewall right now so you do want to make sure that you're using a grommet uh, you don't want to be running wires directly through the firewall because with vibration and everything um, the wires can rub against the sharp metal edges and then get a hole through them and then they'll short out against the uh, the ground of the body so so these are the purple and the red wires and these also are going into the uh, uh, passenger compartment so I'm gonna run these through the firewall as well okay so where we're at now is we have the uh, gray wire from the cruise control kit uh, hooked up to the vehicle speed sensor wire from the truck which is the gray wire with the black stripe uh, the black wire from the from that wire pair is not used and it's a real long harness I just bundled it up and uh, got lots of room back here so I'm just gonna zip tie it and kinda leave it there for now I'm not really a ranger lover at all this is just a truck I drive some guys might uh, not like me for that but you know what you know it's just a 
It's just a daily driver. As far as the chassis ground wire goes, I'm just going to plug it right into that, uh, that wire, right, or, sorry, bolt it right down to that connection right there, chassis ground there on the, uh, inside of the fender well, and that'll be that. Once again, if this was my forerunner, I'd probably cut this connector off, put a new uh, ring terminal on it and after uh, shortening the wire to the right size, but uh, in this case, it's just not important to me, so I'm not going to. Okay, so now that I've got the uh, all the wiring connections under the hood done, I'm going to finalize uh, bolting everything down under the hood uh, by setting the uh, dip switches. No, I didn't call you a dip shit. Dip switches. So those are the uh, tiny little switches. I don't remember how many there are. Six, seven, eight, nine. Um, but those are inside the actual servo motor. There's these tiny little things that you use to kind of program it to what kind of vehicle you're using. So it's like if you're using a manual or automatic transmission, if you want to use tax signal only, sensitivity, different things can be set up through this uh, switch setup. So that's what we're going to be doing now. So here's kind of how we uh, set up all these different switch positions. Um, so the pulse per minute is uh, part of the vehicle speed sensor, how many times it basically clicks as you uh, go a mile, pulse per mile. Um, I don't know how you'd come up with that on your own, but uh, on the other book there, uh, it says that we use 8,000 pulses per minute for the uh, 93 Ranger. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so down in here you can see the uh, dip switches, according to what I have so far. Uh, I need to switch this one up. Number one is up for me. Number two is up for me. So we'll just continue this until I have it all set up for my vehicle. Okay, so the manual says to use one of these things uh, to tap into the... Um, well, it says to use it to tap into all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't really like the... I don't know what they're called. They call, the manual calls them scotch locks. I've, I don't really know. I've never bought them before. I kind of hate them because they usually lead to uh, corroded wires. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was going to, I was, I was going to use these under the dash because it's not a, you know, an outside environment like the engine bay is. Um, but the tack wire that is in the, uh, engine bay, so I kind of have to use it in the engine bay. Uh, otherwise I could cut it and, uh, I could cut the tack wire and then splice in a new wire to put a connector on. It's kind of all over the place. Um. I'm going to try to use some silicone sealant to seal this up so that hopefully it doesn't corrode. Uh, alternatively, I could also use some dielectric grease. Okay, inside the truck now. Uh, so we unsnap the dash, two places. There's one up here, one down here. Don't need to remove the whole thing. I just need to be able to get behind here to uh, uh, make sure there's no wires present. And then I can drill the hole for the uh, wires to pass through where I'm going to mount my switch. So the kit comes with this little template which I've already cut out here. Now I'm going to hammer these. I'm just going to use the center punch too. Uh, dent uh, the plastic. Yeah, there we go. Now let's get a knife and knock out the part between the two holes. There we go. That's all we need for the wires to be able to pass through. Now we can go ahead and uh, push the wires through here. All right, looks like it's going to work. Now I'll just peel this stick stuff off of here. And go ahead and mount this thing on here. So these are the wires coming out of the uh, control panel. Um, so we want to hook these up to the, uh, the connector plug here. Um, the reason they don't have this connector already on them is because then you'd have to drill a much larger hole to uh, mount it to whatever panel you mount it on. So they leave the uh, connecting part up to you. All I gotta do is push them in until they click. Uh, and line up the colors correctly. And these two wires here, the black goes to a ground, and uh, the gray goes to a um, switch light source, like for your don't like uh, like your gauge lights or whatever, or something similar to that. Okay, so those over there are the switches from the control panel. These here are the ones coming uh, through the firewall. Um, so we want to uh, the red and the purple go to your brake light switches, and these three go to the uh, control panel. Once again, same deal. It'd be hard to push it through the firewall if you had this huge connector, so uh, we'll just plug them in now. Uh, and then the connector itself plugs into here. So we can go ahead and do that now, I guess. Right here, connected to the brake pedal, is the uh, brake light switch. There's two wires going to it. 
One is green with a red stripe, one is solid green. The uh, constant hot side is the one with the red stripe, and the uh, switched side is the uh, solid color side. The red wire uh, goes to the constant hot side of the brake light circuit, and the uh, purple wire goes to the switched side of the brake light circuit. Using the scotch connectors, you guys can uh, tear me up in the comments if you like. I deserve it. It's not that hooked up. I truly wish you could see how contorted I am. It's raining, so I didn't want to... And my forerunner's in the garage getting body work done, so... I'm inside of a standard cab truck with the doors closed. Laying across the bench seat with my dog. Because he's a puppy. And I can't... Uh, leave him inside by himself. Which means it's extremely freaking cramped under here. As I try to finish up the last two wires. Here's my switched power wire where I'm going to tap into um, with the uh, the wire that's already got the inline fuse in it. Um, so that's going to be scotch freaking connector right to there. And then right here I have uh, a little under dash light which comes on with the uh, inter with the uh, with the headlights and stuff so that's going to be my illumination right there. So. Okay, we got everything tucked away. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, we're driving down the road now. Co-pilot Coda here, and uh, getting ready to test it out here. So we got the uh, the whole kit there. Let's see if we can turn it on. So the uh, top left button turns it on. Top uh, bottom left button turns it off. That engages the system. Okay. Um, so, driving along at about uh, a little under 40 miles an hour, going to hit the uh, bottom right button, which is set, and it immediately starts working. Come on, got both feet off the pedals, and we're holding that speed. So, if I hit the accelerate button, so now let's see here. Oh, yeah, oh, we're accelerating. It's working. We're up to a little over 40. There's up to about 45, all right, let go of the accelerate button, we're going to tap the uh, brake pedal, and it is disengaged. I'm now uh, put off the brake, but it's just coasting. Now I'm going to hit this up button again on the right side, that's the resume button, and it's bringing me back up. Let's see if it accelerates up to 45 and then holds steady. Oh yeah, very smooth, nice acceleration there, and we're at 45 and it's holding steady. Alrighty, driving down the highway, about 55 miles an hour, let's hit the uh, set button. Bottom right button, take the foot off the gas, seems to be working just fine. Alright, so let's wrap this up. The AudioVox CCS TAC 100 kit, Universal Cruise Control kit. Guess the thumbs up from me. Um, the instructions are very clear, very thorough. The whole kit itself comes with all sorts of different connections for many, many, many different situations of vehicles. So it really is universal. It's got something for every vehicle. I mean, it's seriously, it's it's pretty darn complete. It's pretty awesome. So I mean, I'm sure there are vehicles where it wouldn't work or where you'd have to kind of make your own thing, but but uh, for the vast majority of people, it's a, it's a very complete kit. So it's very neat. Um, ease of install. The instructions are very thorough very clear. Uh, it's pretty darn simple. So just some general things. Um, it does work really neat. Works just as good as a factory cruise control system would. Um, the, uh, you know, as far as remembering your speed, setting, resuming, all that stuff works pretty much as good as a factory system would. Um, you don't have the steering wheel controls like you would in most factory cars, but, um, you know, I mean, for a universal kit, it's pretty much the way it's going to be. Um, as far as using the scotch connectors go, the installation, its uh, it comes with very long wires, long as you probably would ever need. Um, so you, for a real clean install, you can shorten the wires to the needed lengths, and uh, if it came with, if you wanted to buy some weather pack connectors, you can get some real nice weather tight seals that you could use under the hood. Um, like I said, I don't really care about this vehicle too much, I just wanted a system that worked. Um, so I did use the scotch connectors. Now, I'm not a fan of scotch connectors. I really advise you not to use them. Uh, they're very easy to use, and they do work, um, but I have some longevity doubts. 
um, I would strongly recommend not using them under the hood. If you're going to use them in the dash, then you'd probably be alright. Um, but I would strongly not recommend using them under the da under the hood. That being said, I did use one for the tax signal. Um, I used heat shrink where the wire taps into it. Uh, I use electrical grease to try to seal it off and um, I did do it. I don't recommend doing it. I tried to trace that wire into the vehicle but it was a pain in the ass to find out where it goes into the truck. Um, also I just kind of tied up and uh, tied out of the way the, uh, the long bundles of wire like I was talking about. For a cleaner install I would definitely shorten those wires and uh, just to the necessary lengths um, but in this case I really uh, didn't feel like it so those are some tips for anybody who wants to do this on a vehicle they really care about for a real clean uh, factory almost you know factory clean install so with all that said I hope this video was helpful hope it uh, kind of gave you an idea of what you might be getting into and how difficult it would be to install this on your own vehicle if you're working on a 93 Ranger with four cylinder then uh, hopefully this is really really helpful for you to figure out how you're going to mount everything up uh, in the off chance that we're working on the same truck. Um, so there is a, a hotline number you can call. This is an older kit. It's got a phone number you can call for uh, tech support, so that's pretty neat. Um, but I don't know if AudioVox still has still supports that. I mean, they don't even make the kit anymore, so um, you might be out of luck there. Um, but uh, it, is a, it is a fairly easy system to install. It's very complete, and uh, I do recommend it to uh, anyone who's looking to install some aftermarket cruise control. Um, fairly simply and uh, in a real um, neat way. So, um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Go, go, go! On the backfire, he's off the gas. Hit it! Go! 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 Yes! 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 Yes!